In today's full-time RV living video, we're going to give you some update on us getting ready to hit the road here. Uh, first of all, we had some good news and we've had some bad news that we have to take care of. Oh, the day I break these chains, I'm bound for the life of the simple things. A while back, you know that we were having problems with the 12 volt electrical system, ended up burning up. Uh, the original power converter that was in here I was gonna replace that anyway so it wasn't that big of a deal but I also had a second power converter burn up that was pretty much new and it turned out after we did all the tracing through pretty much the whole coach uh, you know I showed a video of doing a lot of that found out that there was two grounded circuits in the back here so Two different grounded circuits were, were just causing haywire on the RV here, guys. And it turns out that those two circuits were somebody had, when they were screwing in the mounting, this was before I owned this, uh, screwing in the uh, mounting of the light here, those screws had pinched the wires in there enough that they'd caused a ground so that wasn't supposed to be there now that's a trip guys to have it just be a screw that caused about five hundred dollars in damage you know just one little screw grounding uh one the, the first power converter, you know, it's not a big deal to me just because uh, I I was going to replace that one anyways because it was the original one here in the RV. And I didn't think any of it, anything of it, having it go out because, you know, it was 40 years old. So that wasn't a big deal, right? But having the second one burn up, that was kind of a big deal. You know, $200 for that power converter and everything, That's that's kind of... A chunk of change and to find out it was nothing but a screw pinching some wires is kind of wild uh, so watch your guy watch out guys when you go do any kind of modifications to your RV or anything like that uh, it's really easy to cause yourself some pretty difficult issues uh, to find right you know because who would have thought that a screw could ground two circuits bad enough that it ended up overworking a charge controller and burning it up so or at least i wouldn't maybe all you guys out there that have been at this a lot longer than me know that sort of a thing so yeah got this it's all working in here uh just a matter of uh getting the second one over here working i when when we were trying to find what was ground in circuits got this pulled off and stuff uh, and the the wire harness fell in there and I don't know if you guys know any good ways to like catch the wires in here to pull them back through uh, so I can remount mount a new uh, light there and and reseal these so I don't have problems with water getting behind there um, it'd be cool if you could give me an idea along those lines so that I can get that taken care of because uh, I don't really know what the best route to go is and I've tried a couple of things including like uh, a uh, clothes hanger and tried to hook it and it didn't work so if you guys have any ideas please share them I just wanted to give you guys an update on the new AC. Um, we've been really happy with it at night, especially. Uh, we like running it at night because it keeps the whole uh, RV cool enough. Um, now one problem with having this back here, trying to cool the whole RV, is we have so many windows in this, which I love, but I, it also can make it kind of like a fishbowl in here. So on a real hot day, real sunny, really hot day, this can't cool the whole coach so we're using the other AC unit during the, that part of the day uh, you know it's it doesn't get as cold actually as the old one that we have that one throws out ice cubes you know uh, this one 
this one it cools it off pretty good and it's really cool the controls and everything on it but like I said it doesn't uh, necessarily really uh, um, freeze it out in here and that's partly because of how the ducting is worked in, working in here uh, the ducting has it blow a lot cooler from here here in the back and the sides than it does here uh, and, and I look I was looking and in and it's got real narrow tubing that comes around to extinguish the cool air here so back here will be icicle but uh, it doesn't uh, blow the uh, cool air as well forward even with these closed it kind of leaks out so um, but I did turn on the uh, heat portion of it it works like as a heat pump as well and that was pretty cool so it should be able to help us with some heating um, played around with the furnace in here and the furnace works it was pretty stinky at first because it hadn't been serviced in a while i want to make sure it get it serviced real well before we head out of here because uh, we'll probably need it some when we're up north and when we're in kentucky for the uh, amazon work camping job that we're doing now i have a really even though we have some happy things that have gone on and then we finally found out what the electrical issue was and everything um i'm kind of disappointed to say that after a few days of having, about a week, I would say, not just a few days, but about a week of having the uh, the, the coach's uh, water all pressurized up and everything, um, we started having uh, a, a leak in the plumbing uh, underneath the sink, pretty much right about where the, pretty much right about right over the top of the furnace here right about where the water comes in so um yeah that's that's gonna be a struggle to take care of i wanted to get some of uh, your thoughts uh i'm thinking after having dumped the uh black tank now and uh having that experience and the fact that it's a pretty much a real uh, a pretty old tank on here and I don't know what solids are left in there or, or what solids aren't. Uh, when I dumped it the last time I dumped it, I, I made sure it was pretty clear. But it was kind of a pain to run water down into the tank to then reflush it and everything uh, through the household plumbing in here. So what I'm thinking is I really want a macerator. And I hear about electron, electric macerators and I hear about... Uh, hydraulic macerators and it seems like whoever has which one uh, tends to talk like it's the epitome uh, the be-all be-all and uh, when I when when I discuss it with a couple of different people that I've talked to they tell me why the other one is terrible and why the one they have is great but I'm just hoping maybe there's some people out there that can help me make a decision on it I like the idea of not having uh, moving parts and get clogged. So the electric uh, macerators that have the uh, propeller to chew things up, um, my understanding is hair and things like that can get into that and clog it up. And then when you have to go and uh, take care of that, do the maintenance on it and unclog it, uh, you end up having to play in uh, well, fecal matter for, <laughs> you know, that, which doesn't sound like something that appeals too much to myself, you know. And then uh, on the other side of that coin, uh, the hydraulic macerators, you know, you don't have that part to clog up. And it seems like uh, you can put a lot of pressure back into them. You can uh, refill the tank right there from where you're at. You don't have to be running around and, and stuff like that. So... Uh, it seemed like a kind of a cool deal. Uh, it seemed cool to be able to back flush it from that. I'm not saying that you can't with the electric macerator, but I just, I don't want something that can get plugged up. So what do you guys think? Tell me what you think about uh, the macerators and, and, and the problems that you see with them and uh, which one in your opinion is better. Because I think I want to get one in I want to do it right. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to go into it and and find out it was a mistake. So please help me out there. So get out there, 
connect with people, live your big story, and make sure you're doing something every single day to reduce world suck. Without you, my friend, and I tell you all about it when I see you again. We come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all.